Hello everyone and welcome back to JAT Workshop and Design for episode 9. Today we are going to be looking at the Fizek Voron 0.2 R1 Pro Kit. Uh, the newly released one from Fizet with some new upgrades in this. But uh, primarily I'm going to be upgrading this one, making it my Voron. Uh, we're going to be adding in some nice little things and we'll go through that after the unboxing here. Um, they've upgraded quite a bit of stuff in this kit, uh, some of which I will not be utilizing at the end of the build, but neat little features that will be good to see. All right, so stuff you see on top here is a few of the add-ons that I have decided to do on top of the original kit and then as well as the color combination here that I have chosen. So for the main ASA components, I have chosen Polymaker Polylight ASA for all of my accent colors. It is going to be a pop green. Um, give it some nice little pop and color to the build. Uh, for the main dark components uh, I have chosen the just the Creality ABS black for a lot of the stuff in the printer, stuff that won't be seen, just functional etc. And then down on the skirting and stuff I have recently got this PLA Multicolor filament nebula purple. I can't remember the name, but I'll put it up here. Um, it is actually a really cool, like, chrome chameleon look. So it is a transition from purple to blue, um, but it is actually a color shift. So no matter what your main look at it is blue, and then kind of off lighting, it changes to purple. Really cool um, color. And this I'm going to use down on the skirting where there's not high temperature um, and I will have a mix of this black and the green there all together in the skirting and make it all look um, super unique when I'm finished here. Uh, the other options I have chose for this build here is to do um, a 2.8 inch touchscreen instead of the standard clicker setup I will be doing not the standard skirts but I will be doing custom enlarged stealth skirting on this one um, gives it a real nice unique look uh, not too many of them out there but this 2.8 inch, inch screen um, should add a nice little adaptive feel and not feel so primitive with the old LCD style screen uh, also, I have the ribbon cable that I will need to run the screen, as well as some RGB lighting, uh, thermistors, so I can run a couple separate thermistors to know my chamber temperature and hot in temperatures. I will be running the Rapido 2.0 Ultra High Flow on this machine because I want to do some high-speed printing etc with this build and this will allow me to check for heat creep as well as chamber temps more accurately uh, I've got some micro switches because I want to run a tap setup on this also um, I may end up going a different route on this and just do manually bed leveling but I got everything to do it just in case uh, other thing I have here is the Fizek Sherpa Mini uh, filament sensor. So this is not only a run out sensor but this is also a flow sensor in case I want to change it to the ability to do somewhat of a multicolor and build an ERCF kit for this machine. I have also decided to opt for the Sherpa CNC extruder on this machine because I will be running the rapid burner hot end which is based on the dragon burner just a little bit larger uh, it won't end up taking up any of my build plate but i will also be printing the top hat uh, 15 millimeters taller 
to allow for the height change up above without rubbing on the top panel. Um, also, I have gotten some heat cert inserts, uh, the ones that won't be included in this kit for my upgrades. Um, I'll have a link to all of this stuff down below uh, if you guys want to check into it a little bit more yourself. This will be kind of a, a, a very long multi-part episode series. Uh, they won't all be released one after another. I will have other stuff in the meantime. And then the main pro kit here. Um, and we'll get to unboxing that here after I get some space cleared off. And we'll be right back. All right, here we are. I got a little bit of space cleared out and we'll get to opening this up. And again, this is the Pro 1.1 kit. And this Pro 1.1 kit, uh, they have just released in, they say, March of 2024. Uh, so it was a whole different kit than what most of the other people have out there. Uh, not a whole lot of differences, just some minor updates and nice features to make this thing a little bit easier to put together. Um, it comes well packaged. Uh, I got it in a couple, less than a week, basically, a few days. I did purchase this on the AliExpress anniversary sale and was able to get it for a low price of $298 shipped. Um, extremely great deal. Directly from Fizex website, it is $480. So getting it on that sale was absolutely fantastic means all of this stuff comes out of my own pocket and I am not sponsored. They did not send this to me for free. All of these opinions are mine, unbiased, etc. So first impressions of the packaging here, it is extremely well packaged and extremely well boxed and it showed up in very good condition. Um, so in here, when you open it first up, some stuff you're not gonna wanna lose, but it is available online. The wiring diagram, and of course some Fizetic stickers. Um, none of them I will likely be using on this machine at all. I'm not much of a sticker person. So as we get in here on the very first layer, we do have all of the acrylic panels uh, for the machine. They all protected and still with the coating on them to guarantee no scratching, etc. And they are wrapped together. I know some of the previous um, models from Fizetic have all these separate so they can slide around. Uh, that is definitely no longer going to be an issue in this packaging. Next on top here looks like we have the power supply unit. Um, it is a 150 watt unit. Uh, and it is a genuine Meanwell power supply. So a good quality power supply. It's always good to know. Let's go ahead and put that back in here. And the last thing on our top layer uh, appears to be the CNC bed. And this is the main reason I ended up going with the Fizetic kit is for the CNC bed rail because uh, I didn't want to deal with the Kirigami. Uh, there's too many people with issues and complaints about that kit out there. So, very nice piece to be included that no one else does. And means that this is one of the most budget kits out there. To include a piece like this is absolutely amazing. Uh, other things we'll have in here is some extra bus clips uh, to make wiring a little bit easier. Looks like we have some fan splicers, some wiring that we'll have to do ourselves. Uh, looks like a thermistor. The bed heater uh, that we do have to apply to the bed ourselves. Uh, some more wiring components. Got some heat set inserts. A uh, little bit of hardware here. And one thing I don't like about these bags are not very, they're not labeled at all, at least in this package. But they should all be pretty well self-explanatory in the instructions. Uh, we do have a two-wire extender here, the PEI-coated bed and magnet. Um, very nice that the flexible bed is included in these kits. 
I believe all of them pretty much have the PEI coated beds nowadays. And then our 6mm thick aluminum bed. Uh, very nice because you have zero warping on this. Um, very nice quality. Uh, the finish on it looks great. Should make it very easy uh, to use as far as applying everything and getting our first layers down in the future. So, we're going to go ahead and package this back up. As almost all this is for the use. All right, we got the first layer out of the way. Moving on to the second layer here. We do have some extrusions. Looks like all of the extrusions uh, very nicely packaged in here. As you can see, uh, they are very nicely laid out in here and they are stacked on top of each other. Nothing in between these, so you could potentially get some scratching, but in shipping as well as these are packed in here, that really shouldn't be an issue. Do have the power supply cord, and then they do include some flush cut snips. Very nice to be included. Always need these things, and actually looks like some nice ball in Allen keys. So pretty handy to have if you don't have that stuff around. I do use the Wura Allens, so likely won't be using those. Plenty of zip ties. Uh, the new PTFE tubes, they have upgraded these from the 2mm inside to the 2.5mm inside now for less issues that people have experienced with it being tight or not allowing enough, um, having too much friction, so this should reduce that friction quite a bit. And we do have a LAN cable uh, for the initial setup on this. Uh, without having to try to make to get Wi-Fi to work basically and here we do have some more wiring looks like the LEDs for the hot end are included and the cool feature now you don't have to wire these yourselves they do have plugs so you can just plug straight into them the original kits you used to have to wire these up yourself so this new addition is super awesome as that is one of the main reasons I was not looking forward to the kit, is having to do soldering that I didn't want to do. Do have the plugs for the external USB and LAN hookup. And then we have the power in um, with the shutoff switch here. Um, again, pre-wired, pretty well laid out. Very nice things to see. Maybe onto another little piece over here. If I get it out. This is a 1.8 degree stepper motor, which they for the 1.1 R1 kit at the March release, they did upgrade these motors. The Z motor they did upgrade upgrade from the previous models. So nice to see continuous improvement and price hikes not happening. Another thing that they did also change. They used to have these wiring shields. It used to be one piece and you'd have to put all the wires in through the end. They have now officially gone to the split so that you can do all of your wiring and then cover it up after the fact without having to make sure that you're planning 100% ahead. Very happy to see this. And we have the Fisetic 1.8 stepper motor for the extruder. Um, matches the other two here quite well. Some of the stuff is extremely hard to get um, out. Okay. Uh, then we have the Z-axis stepper motor. This is the one, the main one that they upgraded uh, to a higher quality stepper motor. And it is also a 1.8 degree. And it is extremely straight. On to the next piece is the Catalyst 2.0, specifically designed for the Voron, which is super awesome. This was 100% designed for the Voron, so they have the ribbon, not ribbon, but the uh, umbilical cord plug on the top. 
It does have CAN bus. It does have a touchscreen out port here. Uh, all the drivers here are pre-installed, but it is not looking like there is heat sinks on them. I have seen some people get heat sinks on them, some people not. So that is something that we may end up adding in the future because I don't want to overheat these. So that is one thing to keep in mind. You will need to get some heat sinks for these to keep these cool. Next thing we got in here is the screen that would originally come with it. Again, I won't be using this, but we'll pull it out and show it to you here anyway. Um, this is the factory screen with the turn knob. So going from this itty bitty screen to something that's a 2.8 and I can use it as a touch uh, will be pretty awesome. The next board that we have in here is the extruder board uh, for the umbilical and power etc. All the fan, all the plugs and everything on this here. One last thing I want to mention on this. They have upgraded the wiring here. So that it takes the flex of the umbilical a whole lot better than the old design. We got some fans, little 3010s. Got another little box of 3010 fans. I will be on the Dragon, on the Rapid Burner, I will be using four 4010 fans from Honey Badger. Bunch of actual genuine 3M double sided tape for attaching some of the components underneath. I do have the Wi-Fi dongle um, to attach to the USB board on the catalyst because the catalyst does not have Wi-Fi built in but you are able to do Wi-Fi with that little attachment. And here is actually the heat sinks for that catalyst. They're not pre-installed but they at least do include them so that's nice. Looks like we got the PCB boards for the extrusions so you don't have to preload individual nuts in here um, these are spaced out exactly as needed as well as bearings and the Sherpa uh, extruder drive gears now on past models of these the Sherpa drive gears were, were knockoff and plastic etc these are actual CNC Sherpa mini gears now. So actual nice genuine parts that will hold up and last be a whole lot better quality than previous kits. Uh, we got some bed springs, some more wiring um, attachments for the stuff that you have to cut at your own length as well as some wire ends etc in there. Next up, we have the belts and the gears. And these are genuine Gates belts. I take, that I take that back. They are not genuine Gates belts, but they are Tua Ayat belts. So, a little sad to see there. They, I, I feel like they used to come with Gates belts, but maybe not. Uh, I got some other micro switches etc for your homing and whatnot. I will be using sensorless homing on this machine and then we have our giant hardware bag here which nice thing about this bag all these individual bags inside here are individually labeled for future reference plenty of nuts etc plenty of bolts screws the spacers that we'll need for the hot end when we get to that uh, they are brass spacers now instead of having to print your own. And the last little copy here. Uh, the rails here. 
um, which they are on this kit. They do. They didn't used to come as preloaded carriages. They are preloaded carriages now where needed. So also a nice little feature that you now get with the current kits to bring it up to standards of other ones. The other thing, these are not just regular steel ones anymore. They have actually gone to a full stainless steel. So don't have to worry about rusting as near as much as prior models. And more than rails. Got some spare parts here. Looks to just be wiring covers and a big old pile of spare ball bearings for the linear rails in case you lose some. The other thing in here we have is their hot end that comes with it. This is just the base hot end. I think they call it the sailfish. Like I say, will not be using this. I am going to the Rapido 2.0. And that is the end of the contents besides the extrusions, which I am going to leave in here for now. As I think you all know at this point, what an extrusion looks like, and I don't need to pull them out all individually. Alright, so that was pretty much the unboxing of this Fizek kit. Uh, like I say, it is the new one for March of 2024. A lot of nice little upgrades, even ones that I wasn't expecting to see. And I did actually purchase this before they changed their website, and it did show up as this brand new kit. So it is very nice to see they're not just shipping old kits out, um, clearing out their old stock. They are actually rolling in all of their new stock already, so you don't have to worry about anything like that. Now on the AliExpress um, link that I bought from, it did not say anything about it being the 1.1 kit or anything like that. So it is very nice to see that uh, even ones that aren't labeled as that are coming in as that now. The, the Z-Rail, um, linear rails, etc. Uh, being upgraded to full stainless now is super great. The cord covers being split now, super nice upgrade from what they were in the past. So if you guys ever had any bad experiences with them in the past, Fizek is apparently really working on improving their quality and end consumer um, results and ease of building these components. Now, I haven't gone through a whole lot of the instructions, but it looks like they have also been working on the instructions and improving those, as well as documentation for the rest of the build and where their build varies from the standard Voron 0.2 kits. So, anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching that. That is going to be the wrap for this video. Just more of an intro, show you what's coming up soon. and. I'm going to get to printing some of these parts and pieces. Uh, the next video will be, the next video in this part series will be uh, the start of the assembly, etc. So thanks for sticking around. Um, feel free to watch the next video that YouTube thinks you will enjoy next. And over here, please click that subscribe if you want to see the build process of my new Voron 0.2. Thanks for watching today, guys, and have a great day.